special session convened for the children so you please feel free to occupy the seats in front also may please occupy the seats this side to your right a uh, very good afternoon all of you present here this evening i would like to first of all welcome you all uh, to the first day of the conference of the 16th international conference of the chief justices of the world we have had sessions in the morning we have had a plenary session that was going on in the auditorium which all of you just attended and now this is the first parallel session which we are beginning with so a very special welcome to all the students who are here to attend this parallel session this session has been specially convened for the benefit of students so that you get an opportunity to interact with all the legal luminaries who you sit, see sitting on the dais today we are extremely happy to have such eminent speakers amongst us learned people who have come all the way to interact with you all today in this session which is the session 3a in this session we are extremely happy to have here with us honorable mr just justice ernest nigumbe the judge and procurer general supreme court from cameroon we extremely happy that he has agreed to chair this session we extremely thankful to you sir and would like to welcome you with a loud round of applause please we have with us honorable mr justice marcos fernando val the judge from dolores judicial department argentina we like to welcome you to the session sir and we are extremely happy to have you amongst us we also have with us honorable mr justice akibo ibrahim g the judge from the high court of justice from benin we extremely happy to have you with us sir and we feel honored that we'll give you get an opportunity to hear your opinion your views thank you so much for being here well also on the dais with us our honorable miss justice rosana kelvetti the judge rio negro negro province from argentina we welcome you ma'am and we have with us honorable miss justice dr mariela rodriguez vega the judge from the supreme court of lima peru thank you so much ma'am for being here we are extremely honored and we have all these students who come from various campuses for the benefit of the speakers i would just like to mention these are students these are senior students of our school from various campuses and they are here because they would love to have an opportunity to interact with you all they would like to hear your views and thereafter whatever questions they have they would like to ask you some questions is that okay with all of you can they interact and talk to you all today our topic of discussion or the topic that we are going to discuss in this room here is going to be global governance structure we all know that the world is changing and with this there is a dire need of 
change in everything there are problems which are transnational nowadays there are transnational crises that are there we have been hearing the deliberations of the various speakers since the morning and all of them have expressed their concern about the way things are changing and the need to address them in a very different manner today our discussion is going to pivot around need for un reform need for a new world order on democratic lines the structure of global democracy as we require it because we all believe that democracy is the only way of governance which can work nowadays and also consideration of options for global structure suggested by various organizations for effective global governance so these are the topics or these are the sub topics on which our discussion is going to pivot and with the permission of the chair uh, may i request all the speakers to contain their speeches to 10 minutes is that okay sir 10 minutes is that okay and thereafter we will have the interactive session so i'd request our chairperson to uh, please begin with the proceedings thank you so much is what you may call a prosecutor general an attorney general that's what it is so you see i cannot be a judge and a prosecutor in fact three of us came from cameroon the chief judge the chief justice head of the delegation the procurator general attached to the supreme court and my humble self So after that correction I'll give you the little bit I prepared for this occasion. In fact, it's not very exhaustive because as you realize I have 10 minutes to present it and in fact is yesterday I knew that I had to present a paper before you all. So we i'm going to talk on global governance structure the need for a new order on democratic lines no one attending the international conference of chiefs of Just chief justices will fail to be impressed by the topics chosen for discussion there is above all the world unity prayer by you the students of cms which to say the least was very touching since the topic is still fresh in our memories i felt i can still come back to it it concerns those visionaries you took time to make special mention of you did rightly talk about africa you did rightly talk of nelson mandela and Desmond Tutu Yes these were these are big names in Africa and wide out the world names you cannot just forget when the history of Africa is concerned However the African that I am compels me to feel that such mission visionaries like Kwame Nkrumah Sekuture of Guinea Conakry and the Emperor Hail Salasi all of blessed memory deserve to be mentioned among the visionaries of Africa indeed Nkrumah without doubt is the greatest pan-africanist who ever lived he brought independence to Ghana in 1957 and working with other visionaries like Sekuture and the Emperor Hail Salasi who too fought for their countries help from the OAU that's the Organization of African Unity 
which today is called the African Union. So you understand why I think Nkrumah tops the list, followed by, in any other, Emperor Hale Selassie, Seko Toure. I may bring in Nelson Mandela, who had, of course, great ideas, and, of course, Bishop Desmond Tutu. There are, of course, other such as Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia and late Amadou Ahija of Cameroon, who I come from, whose contribution to this dream was no less important. This little reminder, which may not be well, which, I'm sorry, I'll take that again. This little remind, my reminder is meant to be food for thought for you students who may not be well versed with the African colonial past. Now, talk about global governance structures Thank you. and the need for their reform. I can only help, I can't help, recalling that this is a very topical issue today. Indeed, as speakers in the auditorium rightly said, the forefathers of the United Na Nations Organization conceived this world organization in order to prevent another devastating war. We must give them credit for doing so. Particularly, as we can rightly say, there has been no other world war since the end of the Second World War. However, it is clear that the United Nations Organization that was conceived by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt Prime Minister Winston Churchill and other world leaders of the world of the time had served its purpose for that time and today needs reformation. In fact, this organization was formed at the wake of a devastating war, like I said. A war that saw the vast destruction of property and life. Above all, after this war came the breakup of colonial rule. India knows about that. Cameroon gained independence in 1960, followed by many other African states. When the breakup of colonial empires emerged, with the breakup of colonial empires emerged powerful nations like India. Again, with the emergence of a new nationalism, came other problems which the forefathers of the United Nations had apparently not foreseen. Those are nationalist wars. The United Nations organization appeared to be helpless in the face of certain disputes between its own members. For a more efficient global governance, the need for creating some such some, such, some structures became urgent. Courts were put in place to settle disputes between the member states and also to try persons thought to have committed very serious offenses like genocide. Furthermore, countries grouped themselves into regional organizations and created arbitration procedures. It is a topic for debate today as to whether these United Nations structures and those original organizations are today fulfilling the dreams of those who conceived them. As we know, neither the, IC, the ICJ, that's the International Court of Justice, nor the International Law of the Sea Tribunal has a body to execute its decisions. A decision from any of these courts, which goes against the interest of one country, may therefore remain unexecuted. Again, some powerful countries, I will name them, have made it known that their citizens will not be tried in some of these courts, given the impression that the citizens of such countries are above the law. While not questioning the integrity of judges of the various courts, people are bound to have the impression that these courts
particularly, the International Criminal Court has been put in place to try only third world leaders. You remember, Charles Taylor is in the Hague being tried. In fact, there is a mandate, a warrant of arrest against the president of uh, Sudan, uh, Bashid. They're all African heads of state. One was a, a, a head of state in Liberia. The other is still a head of state in Sudan. So it is worthy of note that there are many today who advocate that the Security Council be reformed for greater justice, taking into consideration the world map that has changed both economically and militarily in these past years. Surely, democracy rep means representation. Why is India called a great democracy? The answer is clear. This is because India is ruled by the people, the government of the people, for the people, by the people. That's what India is. True democracy implies good governance. How much democracy do we have in the Security Council? That's the question people are asking. Or better still, how representative is this United, United Nations institution of all its members? No doubt, greater justice demands that the composition of this institution be re-examined. I dare agree with most speakers in this conference that the need for one parliament to make laws for all and a court whose decisions can be enforced by some central authority with coercive force is urgently necessary if we are to have justice for all. From the look of things, the desired changes may not come as quickly as we did want them to. That should not stop you students from persistently making your voices heard. Keep on asking because your little voices must be a constant reminder to the powers that be that the change we all need must come. Do not forget that India is a great, a big, and an influential country. One that has the ear of the Commonwealth countries and that of most organizations it belongs to. Through this great democracy, your cries will come to the ears of those powers. Surely, it will certainly be written, the, written in the golden books of history that you, the students of City Montessori School, who persistently raised your, your voices and spoke on behalf of the children of the world, have brought about decisions taken by the world powers for greater peace and stability. My dear children, I sincerely encourage you to grow in that spirit. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, sir. First of all, uh, we really regret uh, the mistake that we made. Correction, right? We didn't want to go on with that, so we had to make the correction. Thank you so much for those very, uh, very, very informative and very nice words of yours. You mentioned and you reminded the students of the formation of the UNO, and you also reminded them that yes, it is time that we rethink of the structure of the UN. And this is the very apt topic that we have come here to discuss today. You also reminded that uh, we need to evaluate whether UN is actually fulfilling the aspirations of the people who conceive the idea of the United Nations. Right, sir? 
and you also mentioned that persistently since yesterday we have been hearing the students of CMS, our own students, talk about the need of changing the world governance order. Uh, we all understand that the world has changed in a big, big way and we need to see, we need or rather we see the cries of democracy and the need of democracy everywhere. Uh, may we now, with the permission of the Chair, request the next speaker to speak? Would you like to... Yeah, I think uh, since you've got the lead, I prefer that you do the reading. Okay, all right, all right. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Marcos Fernando Val, the Judge Dolores Judicial Department, Argentina, to please uh, speak to the students. May I? Thank you. And he's going to be speaking in Spanish. We're extremely happy and proud that we have speakers who are going to be speaking in different languages and we get the opportunity to hear them. Hello. Um, buenas tardes, eh, muchísimas gracias por la invitación y por el trato desde que hemos llegado a Lucknow eh, nos han tratado cordialmente y tiene una ciudad muy linda y estoy muy contento de estar acá. Thank you for the invitation given to me to participate in this conference and also for the treatment meted out to all of us, such warmth and such love. Thank you, we are enjoying our stay in Lucknow. Eh, una cosa que no dice eh, el cartel, pero que no es un error, eh, porque yo no lo puse, porque no tiene que ver acá, es que eh, además yo doy clase en la facultad, que es una de las actividades que más me gusta. Así que dar un, una explicación para alumnos es una cosa además especialmente grata. Ok, uh, this is not a correction, but it is something he wants to mention that he is not just um, a judge, he's, he also gives classes in a university and he interacts with students. Eh, bueno, mi nombre, como decía, es eh, Marcos Val y yo soy juez en la provincia de Buenos Aires, eh, que es una, la provincia más poblada, ella es de, también de otra provincia, no de Buenos Aires, es de Río Negro, pero tenemos más población nosotros. My name is uh, Marcos Val and I am from the province of Buenos Aires in Argentina, which is the most populated province. Eh, la provincia de Buenos Aires, eh, a su vez, está dividida también en regiones que se llaman departamentos judiciales. The province of Buenos Aires is also divided in regions which are called the juri juridical departments. Yo uno de esos departamentos judiciales de Buenos Aires, de la provincia de Buenos Aires, es Dolores, desde donde soy yo. One of these departments is called Dolores, from which I come. Ahí soy juez en cuestiones civiles y comerciales. And I am a judge on civil and commercial matters. Y tengo también algunos asuntos de derecho de familia. And I also deal with some issues regarding rights of the family. Eh, en el departamento judicial en el que yo trabajo es un no es una dentro de una ciudad es en una zona rural sin embargo las, los casos que se ven en el juzgado en el que yo soy juez no difieren en, en sustancia de los casos que se ven en las grandes ciudades. But uh, the matters which I deal with in the rural areas are not very different from the matters dealt with in the big cities. Eh, y antes de venir acá, justo cuando estaba preparando la charla, en realidad tengo que decirles que no estoy acostumbrado a leer cuando hago una exposición. Okay, before coming here, I was preparing this speech, but I must tell you that I'm not used to reading out from the speech that I have prepared. Porque eso es porque en realidad cuando uno expone hay como una interacción 
eh, que hace que uno lo vaya ajustando porque no solo me parece que aprende el que habla sin, eh, los, los que escuchan sino también el que habla because i think this way the interaction is more live so that you can understand in some way what i'm speaking and you can also participate in the conversation eh, así pasó que desde que llegué ayer y escuché y vi eh, todo lo que ustedes prepararon también eh, se modificó la manera de, de ver algunas cosas que tenía antes de ayer Okay, and uh, so, since yesterday when I came, I saw everything. I also changed some of my perspective towards seeing certain things before what I had before yesterday, day before. Okay. <laughs> Now he's going to read. Eh, Argentina ha suscrito la Convención sobre los Derechos del Niño y ha incorporado a su constitución nacional eh, ah, y los ha incorporado a su constitución nacional Argentina has established a convention on child rights and has included it in its national constitution además existen leyes nacionales y provinciales destinadas a promover y proteger en forma integral los derechos de los niños, niñas y adolescentes Moreover, national and provincial laws exist uh, to promote and protect in an integral way the rights of children and adolescents. La legislación argentina, entre muchos otros, protege el derecho a la vida, a su disfrute, protección y a la obtención de una buena calidad de vida. The Argentine law, among others, protects the right to life, its enjoyment, protection and the op And the right to obtain a good quality of life. También las niñas, niños y adolescentes tienen derecho a la dignidad como sujetos de derecho y personas en desarrollo, a no ser sometidos a tratos violento, discriminatorio, vejatorio, humillante, intimidatorio. Also, children and adolescents have the right to dignity as lawful subjects and growing people to not be treated violently in a discriminatory or humiliating manner, to not be subject to any form of economic exploitation. A no ser sometidos a ninguna forma de explotación económica, torturas, abusos o negligencias, explotación sexual, secuestros o tráfico para cualquier fin o en cualquier forma o condición cruel o degradante. To not be subject to any form of economic exploitation, torture, abuse or neglect or sexual exploitation, kidnapping or trafficking, trafficking for whatever cruel or degrading reason. Es decir, que desde el aspecto del derecho escrito, from the perspective of the written law, Argentina contempla derechos humanos fundamentales para garantizar una vida en paz, vivida con dignidad y democráticamente. Argentina has various fundamental rights to guarantee a life lived in peace, in dignity and lived democratically. Sin embargo, la realidad cotidiana de mi tarea como juez demuestra que esos derechos no están vigentes para todos los niños, niñas y adolescentes. However, the actual reality of my job as a judge shows that these rights are not really used for the welfare of children and adolescents. Los niños con los que suelo trabajar en el juzgado no tienen una vida digna, con calidad y sin violencia. The children with whom I usually deal with don't have a quality life, a dignified life without violence. Y esas situaciones, las deprivaciones de derechos, obedecen casi siempre a situaciones de pobreza o de escasez de recursos económicos. And these situations, the deprivation of rights, Uh, obey almost always situation follow almost always situations of poverty or the lack of economic resources si bien los estados nacional y provincial prevén programas de asistencia económica para esas situaciones ellos son escasos y no alcanzan a brindar una cobertura adecuada a cada caso Although the national and provincial states have programs of economic assistance for such situations, they are scarce and do not offer an adequate compensation for each case. Por ejemplo, eh, no se contrata la cantidad necesaria de profesionales para abordarlos. Uh, 
uh, for example, they don't employ the right number of professionals to carry it forward. Y como les decía antes de venir para Lucknow desde Argentina, eh, unos días antes de venir a la India, sucedieron en Dolores, donde yo trabajo, dos hechos terribles. And like I commented earlier, before coming to India, a few days before coming to India, there occurred two terrible incidents in Dolores. En el primero de los dos, dejaron a una persona esposada a la cama de un hospital a la espera de ser evaluada por un médico psiquiatra, el que tardó varios días en ir a donde la mujer estaba internada y atada. Y ello fue debido a que no hay recursos económicos para contratar más profesionales y crear un servicio de psiquiatría eficiente local, tal como lo prevé la ley. In the first such incident, they left a woman lying on the hospital bed for days in the hopes of being assessed by a psychiatrist who could only come after many days to visit the woman who was tied to the bed, only because there are not sufficient economic resources to employ more professionals for the efficiency of the psychiatric body in Argentina, as is laid down by the law. En el segundo de los dos casos, en el segundo de ellos, una niña falleció a causa de la demora en ser asistida por los médicos. Los que no se ponían de acuerdo en si la niña debía ser atendida en el sistema público de salud o en el servicio privado, lo cual dependía de si tenía o no cobertura de una obra social de salud. In the second such incident, a girl died because the doctors couldn't treat her on time, because they couldn't reach an agreement on whether she should be treated in the public or the private sector of health, and uh, which depended on whether she has a compensation, uh, a social compensation, uh, health insurance, whether she has a health insurance or not. Obviamente que la cuestión merece un análisis más detallado y mucho más profundo, pero no contamos en esta oportunidad con el tiempo suficiente para ello. Obviously, this matter needs a more detailed and profound analysis, but we don't have much time right now here for that. Situaciones particulares como las citadas me han llevado a creer que tan importante para la paz y las democracias es el establecimiento de los derechos como la asignación de recursos para que esos derechos sean efectivos. Such, uh, such situations like the ones just mentioned Uh, have led me to believe that for peace and for democ democracies uh, it is equally the establishment of rights uh, for, for example which include the uh, uh, allotment of resources is as important as anything else. No estoy descubriendo un problema nuevo, lo sé, pero quiero sumarme a llamar la atención sobre esta circunstancia porque si decididamente no ponemos el foco de interés también allí Nunca lograremos hacer que los derechos reconocidos sean una realidad. I am not uh, describing to you a new problem. I know that, but I would just like to get uh, catch your attention by summarizing and saying that uh, if we don't put our um, the focus of our attention there, we'll never uh, achieve. Uh, we'll never come to a point where we see such rights becoming a reality for children. Hasta que el mundo no se comprometa verdaderamente con ello, la paz mundial y las democracias no estarán garantizadas. Till the world does not uh, reach that level where we can guarantee such rights to children, world peace and democracy w are not things that will be guaranteed to us. De modo tal que más que venir a exponer, vengo a hacer un pedido a ustedes, estudiantes que representan la generación del mañana, y es este, que incorporen en cada declaración o reconocimiento de derechos la forma en que económicamente esos derechos se harán una realidad y cuando todos gocemos de los mismos derechos entonces sí podrá haber paz mundial and i would like to request to all of you students here who are the generation of tomorrow that uh, in co in whatever uh, recognition of rights that you have um, that you should uh, also try to understand how economically these rights are becoming a reality And when all of us in the world enjoy the same rights, there will be true world peace. Una última cuestión que no está escrita. Okay. Last question which is not written here. Es que eh, felicito y celebro que ustedes como con la edad que tienen tengan interés por estos temas. Porque yo tengo una hija de la misma edad de ustedes. 
in that i would like to congratulate you and praise the fact that at your age you are all interested in topics such as these because i have a daughter your age eh, que va a la escuela como ustedes y cada vez que escucha hablar de temas como paz mundial democracia igualdad de derechos prende la televisión se acuesta a dormir y no tiene ningún compromiso la verdad es que me siento los admiro y los felicito muchas gracias y uh, and I have a daughter who like you goes to school but whenever any topic of world peace or human rights comes up she usually switches on the television or goes off to sleep so thanks a lot for your interest yes uh, yeah but then maybe I'm asking my colleagues on the table because of time constraints If you can tie yourself down to 10 minutes, I'm sure we'll finish in good time to give our children time to ask us questions. So maybe if... You'd like me to invite the next Yeah, question? you do the next one. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Justice. It was really nice listening to your wonderful speech, your wonderful words. And uh, I think the children really identified with the problems because the problems seem to be the same world over, problems related to children, they all seem to be the same. So we realize that it is not only in our country, it is in all country that problems of resource crunch is seen, poverty is seen. So we all identify with that. And thank you so much for your words of wisdom. Thank you so much. And now may I request uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Akibo Ibrahim J. G. I'm sorry. Judge from the High Court of Justice, uh, Benin. May I please request you to address the children? Would you like to come to the podium? And he is going to speak in French. And are you going to translate it? All right. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Je disais tantôt bonsoir mes frères et mes sœurs. I say once again good evening my sisters and my brothers. Je suis très heureux et c'est un honneur pour moi de fouler le sol indien, le sol indien pour la deuxième fois. It Car is... déjà en 2013, j'étais dans les mêmes salles ici avec la délégation béninoise. It is an honor for me to be here once again. It is the second time I am coming to this room. I have been here in 2013. I like this place very much. Je suis revenu cette année et comme on m'a présenté, je suis juge à la haute cour de justice du Bénin. I have come here again and it's a pleasure. As they have mentioned, I am justice with in the court of Benin. La haute cour de justice. C'est une juridiction supérieure qui juge les ministres, les députés et autres autorités au plan national. The High Court of Justice is a high department which judges the deputies and high level functionaries in Benin. Je disais tantôt que je suis heureux parce que je suis venu ici sur le sol indien, le seul d'un grand homme dont l'évocation seule du nom fait frémir plus d'un. Je veux nommer cette personnalité en paix qu'on ne peut pas classer Mohamed Moudira Gandhi. Nous sommes sur son sel, le sol qu'il a vu naître et le sol qu'il a recueilli à la fin de sa vie. I am glad to be here in this country where once the prime minister whose First Lady Prime Minister was Indira Gandhi who lived and died with what 
she thought was important. Aujourd'hui, vous et nous, nous nous réclamons héritiers de ce grand homme. Today, you and I share that same heritage. Parce qu'il a vécu pour la non-violence, il a combattu pour la non-violence, il a donné sa vie à la non-violence. Because she lived for non-violence, she died for non-violence and she gave all her life to this cause. Nous disons merci à cette personne. We say thank you to this great person. À sa mémoire. To her memory. Hier, un de mes aînés de la délégation Cameroun disait que honte au fils à l'enfant qui n'a pas fait mieux que son père. Yesterday, one of my elder comrades said that This lady didn't do as much as her father had done. Vous comprenez que notre aïeux commun, on dira à Mohamed Gandhi, a fait ce qu'il a fait en son temps. Aujourd'hui, la génération issue, qui, sa, sa descendance, est en train de marcher sur ses pas. Today, We understand that Indira Gandhi did what she did. It's for today's generation to see the problems of today and find their solutions. Nous devons reconnaître l'investissement humain, financier et tout autre qui est fait chaque année pour que de par le monde, nous nous retrouvons à Delhi et à Lucknow. We need to realize the importance of human resources In conferences like this, where every year in Lucknow, we come together to find solutions to global problems. Comme nos grands frères, comme nos sœurs, qui aujourd'hui sont en train d'organiser ces sommets chaque année, vous qui venez après eux, vous avez l'obligation de parfaire, de continuer sur cette même voie de la non-violence. Like our big brothers, our big sisters, who take the initiative and organize these conferences every year it is it would also be your responsibility when you grow up to make du efforts like these du développement dans la démocratie dans le respect de l'autre to establish proper democracy to have progress in democracy and first and foremost to develop respect for each other et comme hier Hier comme en, en 2013, j'ai vu la prestation de nos frères, de nos jeunes frères de l'école City Monstory School. Je suis rassuré que cette relève est déjà en voie d'être assurée. Like I had the pleasure to address you all in 2013 and I now again get the chance to do so. I think this trend would continue in the City Montessori School of Lucknow. Lorsque nous parlons des droits fondamentaux de la personne humaine, ça peut paraître et, théorique dans les livres, mais il faut ramener ça à la vie de tous les jours pour que nous sachions ce que nous appelons comme ça et pourquoi il faut protéger ces droits, pourquoi il faut se battre pour que tous, vous et nous, on puisse profiter de ces droits fondamentaux de l'homme. When we talk about inalienable rights of man, it is not just a theoretical concept. It is something that touches you and me. It englobes us all. Oui, que mon frère qui est devant moi, assis avec l'autre, si aujourd'hui, sa bijouton le crache sur l'autre, aujourd'hui, demain, après demain, je ne pense pas qu'il puisse supporter ça, parce que ça fait de la frustration. Il finira, il finira par être frustré de se voir traiter comme ça par son ami, son collègue du, 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 du même établissement. Yes, if my brother sitting in front of me today is not treated properly, it should frustrate me. It should move me to make action so that I live in a world that teaches one another equally. Un grand philosophe a dit de la frustration naît l'agressivité. Celui à qui on a fait, on a agi mal en, envers lui, aujourd'hui, demain, 
Après demain, il va se revolter, il sera frustré, il va se fâcher et voudra réagir. Là, vous n'allez pas contenir les limites de sa colère. Like a great philosopher once said, it is out of frustration that man becomes aggressive. If today you are not treated properly and tomorrow I follow in the same trend, you would one day revolt. Legalité entre gens. Nous avons nos sœurs ici, nous avons nos frères qui vont à la même école. Ça veut dire que on leur donne les mêmes chances. En 2013, quand nous sommes venus ici, dans l'historique des derniers de, 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 de dernières décennies, on nous a présenté une de nos soeurs indiennes qui figure parmi les meilleurs astronautes de ce pays. Si on ne lui avait, donné, on lui avait pas donné l'occasion d'aller à l'école avec ses frères, ses, ses amis garçons, comment pourrait-elle devenir aujourd'hui astronaute? When we talk about equality, it is the equality of equal opportunities, like you all come to school and get the same education, that means you get the same opportunities to learn. And I have observed that in the last two years, when I last visited this place in 2013, great things have happened. Today, you have laws which state the right to education. Every child in India gets a chance to go to school and gets the same opportunities to learn. Ce que nous demandons, ce que nous réclamons, c'est que vous et nous, on nous donne les mêmes chances, les mêmes droits d'aller aux mêmes écoles, d'avoir les mêmes professeurs et Dieu sera partagé chacun de nous. Qui va devenir ingénieur, qui va devenir avocat, qui va devenir juge, nous sommes là tous, Dieu le connaît déjà. It's what we demand, it's what we want. It's the access, equal access to all the resources. It's the equal access to education. All the children who want to become engineers should get access to the same school, should be taught by the same professors, should have the same curriculum. So it is the access to equal opportunities that I desire. We are all equal in front of the God. Lorsque nous venons en Inde, nous venons pour des collègues, des collègues scientifiques les, les trois quarts des invités qui viennent, ils partent en, en faisant consultation, en, en faisant consultation médicale pour les yeux, en achetant les verres optiques. C'est parce que la, la médecine indienne fait partie des meilleures euh, médecines au monde. C'est ce que nous voulons. Dieu est juste, puisque Dieu est justice et est juste, il nous donne la faculté les uns et les autres de, de savoir d'avoir le savoir qu'on nous accorde cette opportunité d'apprendre comme ceux qui sont à Tokyo ceux qui sont à Washington ceux qui sont à Paris globalement c'est ce qu'on appelle les droits fondamentaux de l'homme que nous puissions avoir cette faculté qui est donnée aux uns soit donnée aux autres je suis venu depuis bientôt quatre jours je vais dans la boutique qui me plaît pour acheter l'iPad. Je vais dans la boutique qui me plaît pour acheter le, le Sari. Ailleurs et sous d'autres cieux, ça n'a pas été toujours comme ça. Il y a des vents, des voies que vous ne pouvez, pour lesquelles vous ne pouvez pas passer. Ailleurs, le matin, quelqu'un finit de nettoyer son pistolet. Si vous avez la chance, peut-être à, à cause de votre race, à cause de votre peau, vous, vous êtes le premier à passer, c'est sur vous qu'on va essayer, essayer le, P, le pistolet automatique pour voir si ça fonctionne. Here, here I would like to mention that three-fourths of delegates who come to India go also for medic, recommend Indian medicine. Why? Because Indian medicine, Indian doctors are one of the best in the world. We are at equal level with the doctors that are in Japan, the doctors that are in Paris, the doctors that are in Washington. It is this human faculty, the faculty to have knowledge, which makes us equal. I would also like to tell you, when I come here, since the last four days, I can go to a shop to buy an iPad, I can go to a shop to buy a sari. But this wasn't the case in the past. In the past, it could just happen that I take a promenade on the road and someone with an automatic rifle aims at me to check whether it functions or not. But the things are changing and for the better. Mes, mes soeurs et mes frères, 
je vais m'en arrêter là en vous rappelant que comme j'ai parlé du pistolet tout à l'heure, vous pouvez avoir la malchance de passer devant une villa, vous n'avez rien dit à personne et qu'on lâche le chien pour voir s'il est à droite, si on l'a bien adressé, s'il sera efficace. Ce sont toutes ces maltraitances que nous refusons. Les tests qui les prévoient, les droits fondamentaux, sont là au plan international, au plan national de chaque pays. Les institutions qui les protègent, qui font la sensibilisation autour, sont dans les tests que nous avons, je disais, comme communication. Ma communication, elle a été déposée depuis le matin et elle a été déjà traduite par celui qui vous parle là-bas. Donc, j'en dépose copie, on peut la voir, mais j'ai voulu vous amener dans le réel, le réel quotidien de ce qu'on appelle le respect des droits fondamentaux de l'homme. Je vous remercie. My friends, to end, I would tell you what can happen. Today, you can just pass by a great villa and someone just might let his dog off to see whether he's hungry, whether he bites or not. So, these things can happen. What can you do? You should be aware of your rights. There are fundamental, human beings have fundamental rights at the international level and at the national level. So be conscious of your rights to protect yourself from exploitation. I had prepared the speech in the morning. I gave it for translation. But I, what I spoke here was something real, something that we all live. And I wanted to share that with you. Thank you and have a nice day. Maybe he spoke in French. I'm uh, from Cameroon. The official languages are French and English. I speak French too. I speak English better. Okay, I just want to make a few corrections which came up. You see, our colleague, sorry, my voice is not, it's not the loudest. So, my colleague here works, is a judge of the High Court of Justice in Benin. The High Court of Justice is a special court. It's not a common law court that tries every case. The High Court of Justice is there to try those big civil servants, ministers, the head of state, for such cases, offenses like treason. It's not... He talked on the High Court, but so I just thought I should make that distinction. And okay, and secondly, my colleague exhausts you, quoting what a colleague said yesterday. I'll quote him. Shame unto that child. Shame unto that child who cannot boast to have done better than his parents. Shame unto you if you cannot boast to have done better than your parents. In fact, he was alluding to the works and the grandeur of Madame Indigran Gandhi and hopes that you will go above her. That's his wish. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we are very thankful to our Honorable Justice for having shared his views and at the same time speaking from the heart. Thank you so much for doing so. And uh, the point that uh, just now mentioned was, this was said yesterday, and it meant that children should be able to perform or do or achieve much more than what their parents have done. So this is what he wanted to point out right now. Thank you so much. And may we just uh, put our hands together once again for our previous speaker. And at the same time, invite our next, next speaker Honorable Ms. Justice Rosanna Calvete, the judge from the Rio Negro pro province of Argentina. You are most welcome, ma'am. And may we request you to please address the children. Hello. Okay. Thanks. Um, the same as uh, Marcos, I don't use to read, but uh, English is not my language, so I have to do so. If you don't understand what they say, because my pronunciation is not the best, uh, you will tell me, and we translate in the, say, in the same way as he did. You understand what I mean? I hope you all understood what ma'am said right now. 
so you will be able to understand when she speaks i think yes we will be able to they will all be able to understand okay. if they don't understand you help me right i'll definitely um i want to highlight that it's an honor for me to participate in this uh, international congress with such important personalities is the first time i visit the country and certainly things would not be the same for me this experience will not leave things in the same place they were when i came here to india i'm surprised because we became from different countries we had been called here for different reasons we speak different language we wear different clothes we have different religions but we have the same passion a united world do you understand uh cause of that i think we will be link the internet the in the internet way just by now we are here for a great reason yesterday and today some conferences talk about the inadequacy of current international organizations to resolve conflicts that do not need theory thing i agree that angry don't need a theory illness don't need a theory war don't need a theory the constant and continuous violation of human rights needs no explanation since the united nations was founded the need to protect world peace economic sustain sustainability and social progress were recognized international agreement certainly departed from the universal declaration of human rights the international covenant on civil and political rights the international covenant on social economic and cultural and cultural rights all those that recognize the children rights the women rights the worker rights all those that promote economical developments and more of them I have no doubt that these agreements have been important for the humanity story and they feel a common denominator for the countries that signed them but I think they are not enough we need another kind of factions certainly these exhortations have to be an important part of our life in our family as a father as a mother as children in our works as chiefs of workers as Jews as students as teachers in our civic decisions as citizen people make the change and then we certainly find the way in my country more of this agreement have acquired in the last constitutional reform in 1994 and cause of that in the recent re- reform of the civil and commercial code have been incorporated those conventions and treaties in the next test in the new text of law one of those was the convention of the children rights adopted by united nation by united national general assembly on 20 november of 1989 article 12 provides that states assure to children able to form their own judgment the right to express their opinion and be heard in all matters affecting them essentially taking their age and maturity this right should be especially taken into account by judges when processing files with minors in the context some institutes of family law had to change to be in sum with our constitution and the international agreements i forgive to say you that i am assured the same as he is in civil and commercial and sometimes family 
and we have the same uh, cases in different countries, but the same kind of cases. Because of that, I will tell you one of the first sentences that changed the way we work it in the court. On adoption subject, the new code says that it's a legal institution with aims to protect the rights of children and adolescents to live and develop in a family. The family will provide care designed to meet their emotional and material needs when they will not be provided by their family of origin. Then, it recognizes three different types of adoption. Full adoption, simple adoption, and the integrative adoption. The first one gives the adopted son the status and extinguish the links with the family of origin, but not the engagement impediments. In simple adoption, the adopted son's status is conferred, but does not create legal ties with, with or with relatives of the spouse of the adopter. And finally, the integrative adoption is set when the child is adopted to spouse or partner and feel it bond in all its effects between the adopted and the biological progenitor who lives with the adopted remains, because certainly the purpose is to recognize the family situation. This adoption of integration has its own characteristics because it responds to a constitutional, constitutional view of the right of children to have a family and becomes a figure that is included in a text that regulates private relation in a legal institution with social interest. It is a decision that affects everyone because it keeps the filial relationship and all it affects between the adopted and his father or mother and shows a third part that was not originally a member of that family. Recognize who it is part of the life and that child and relationship, especially emotional, precede the recognition of law. You understand me? Can you understand? You know that the human right to live and be with a family as a, the primary nucleus for socialization had been recognized in the preambles to the Convention of the Right of the Children and other international instruments such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the American Convention of Human Rights, the Covenant of Economic, Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, including others. The guiding principle is this ruling is undoubtedly the best interest of the child must integrate the subject of the decision and be taken into account at the time's dictates that as this article says. Uh, in all issues concerning children, whether undertaken by public or private social welfare institutions, the cause, administrative authorities or legislative bodies, the primary consideration is to be served the best interest of the child. This is also for us a general principle with constitu constitutional status. The, the case I will uh, talk to you about was a result of integration adoption. It was so simple. Uh, a woman had a relationship with a man and his first child was born. Then, when she was pregnant for the second time, they separated and the mom was moved to a nearly town with the children. The father no longer took care of the children, neither asked for them. Miss, uh, the mother started a full trial against the father of both children and while he made a commitment to pay it, he never did not visit the children because he was not interested in them. After a while, the mother met another man, married him and had a new boy. After a while, the mother met, some, uh, sorry, this uh, man was who really takes care of both her son and the small children of his wife, who at that time were three and two years old, and assumes the role of father to them, not only meeting their material needs, but also affectives. Over the years, the boys expressed their intention to take the name of the one person they considered their real father was. They knew that he was not their biological father, and for that reason, 
the mother and his spouse approached the court calling for an integrative adoption. In response, the shoot soon the young people to listen to each of them and ask what they really wanted to do and instead they had been living in the same family, their intentions were different. Both of them gave the spouse of the mother a treatment of father and he also treated them like his children. Moreover, the moreover that they were recognized by the community where they like. So one of them wanted to have some contact with their biologic with his biological father and therefore he wanted a simple adoption. It is one that keeps those ties. Instead his brother wanted a full adoption. Both of them were inscribed with the surname of the one he considered his really father was, but the adoption had different effects as each child wanted. The fact of belonging to the same family was not an obstacle for that. This answers the principle of progressive autonomy that the new code also provides. In the process, the biological father acknowledged no contact since 19. 97, so it accepted the decision like the rest actors. They should also note that the social report made arose the doctor, spouse, and children of that way, spouse and children of that way constitute an assembly, organized and functional home, attending to their needs. In that context, it exercises subsidiary paternity of children by replacing the vacant paternal function. In conclusion, we can say that in family matters must always prevail as a decisive factor for a resolution legal, moral, or material children about any other circumstances that might interest in each case. This is the same delicate delicacy with which must treat cases involving minors in which they should must put a special care in the way that gives precedence to the rules because they are working with situations, charges involving the most intimate of human beings in the frame. Nothing more and nothing less than the origin of the family, the origin of the society. At this time, shoots can no longer dictate like the dictate sentences that like that close you go to to bought in a mall, like the pret a uh, clothes. Each should have to make uh, an special cloth for everyone, uh, taking care of um, the taking care of one of each person, because we are all different. We have to accept our difference, and in this way, I understand that we can uh, do a better work uh, because if we have a lot of things that make us to be unit, we have to respect our difference too, and recognize our difference, and love our difference to make the things different for all us. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. Did you all understand? I think uh, the claps say it all. Yeah. Their applause says it all. They could all understand. You were very clear in what you said. And uh, Madam Speaker, she mentioned, she talked to you people about the rights of the children, something which the entire world is becoming very, very sensitive to. She talked about the importance of family values, uh, family to protect the children, right? Then you also spoke about uh, the different uh, ways of adoption that are there in her country. The, then she talked of the common problems that are there world over. Even in our country, we have those problems. But at the same time, she also mentioned that uh, there, in every institution, reforms and changes are essential. We need to work on uh, conflicts and look for the right solutions like we are doing today. We know that there are a lot of conflicts in the world today, but we have got together here to look for solutions for those conflicts. And uh, 
then she also mentioned that she came with a different perspective when she was here and has undergone a change in the past one and a half day right so i think uh, uh, that was all that she said and thank you very much for those very valuable words of yours and we are all enlightened and very happy to have heard your speech thank you so much ma'am come honorable miss justice dr marilla <laughs> rodrigues vega the judge supreme court of lima peru and i would request all the speakers to please uh, excuse me if i make any mistakes in the pronunciation of your names i'm really sorry no yes ma'am buenas tardes señores magistrados señores alumnos jóvenes el tema que se que escogí está dentro del tópico de creación de nuevas instituciones en el proceso de construcción en el nuevo orden mundial de una línea democrática. Good evening dear students, the topic which I have chosen for today's uh, for my speech today is creation of new institutions in the process of construction in the new world order on democratic lines. Bueno, como todos sabemos, las personas todas tenemos necesidades básicas que cubrir. Necesidades como la alimentación, el, la vestimenta, tener un techo de, de protegerse, y luego de otras como la salud, la educación, gozar de un ambiente sano y el acceso a la justicia. As everyone knows that each and every human being needs to meet his or her basic needs of food, clothes, a shelter uh, a roof above their heads that is shelter and other such needs as health education the right to enjoy a healthy environment and access to justice hay una dinámica indispensable en la lucha por la vida y las interrelaciones con otros seres humanos con el transcurso del tiempo se han reconocido estas necesidades como derechos subjetivos de cada individuo de cada persona y se han reconocido universalmente por los estados que hoy se conocen como derechos fundamentales. There is an essential dynamic in the struggle for life and and in the relationships with other human beings. Over time these rights have been recognized for every individual for every person and now the states recognize them as fundamental rights. La idea central es que reconociendo a cada sujeto su dignidad en el transcurso de su vida se le debe de asegurar que tenga el menor número de dificultades que impidan su bienestar. The main the principal idea is that each lawful subject of the state should recognize his or her dignity and in the course of his or her life should be given opportunities to ensure that he enjoys complete uh, uh, fulfillment of these rights. Las personas que conformamos este mundo son seres con historia, con pasado, porque tenemos orígenes y como vivimos en colectividad al interior de un grupo de personas que organizadas para tratar de satisfacer estas necesidades es como se han formado los estados y con ellos las relaciones del poder. The people who make up this world are beings with history, with the past and with their own roots and uh, we are also characterized by how we live within a community a group of people organized to try to meet our needs as the i'm sorry just a minute relación de poder sí provengo del perú país que se encuentra en américa del sur que tiene su propia historia su propio desarrollo social y cultural okay. que fue cuna de una civilización inca con una historia grande dentro de las civilizaciones del mundo que culminó con la conquista de España en el proceso de colonización en el año 1529 cuando fue ejecutado el último inca Atahualpa y con ello se inicia el dominio de la monarquía española I come from Peru which is located in South America which has its own history its own social and cultural development and was the cradle of the Inca civilization with a very big with a very great place in the history of the world civilizations when which ended with the conquest of Spain that uh, in the process of the colonization of Incas it uh, invaded the territories and ruled them till 1529 ruled them 
After 1529, the year when the last Inca king Atahualpa was executed by the Spanish, and thus the uh, rule of the Spanish monarchy began in Peru. Después de este proceso de colonización que dura eh, de colonización que dura hasta la República, los gobiernos se han visto los gobiernos se han visto representados con 12 constituciones políticas hasta la fecha, de las cuales hemos realizado tenemos efectuado relaciones con los demás países con intereses de desarrollo económico, cultural y otros, todos con la finalidad de obtener mejores niveles de vida para sus habitantes y que luego podríamos considerar que hemos llegado a ser denominados, después de ser un país del tercer mundo, a país en vía de desarrollo y ahora intentamos describirnos como un país emergente. After colonization, after the Spanish colonization, which lasted for around 300 years, uh, Peru gained its independence from the Spanish Kingdom in 1824, when the Peruvian Republic came into being uh, with a representative government. Uh, we have so far had 12 constitutions, and we have also defined our relationships with other countries and our economic interests, cultural development, all with the aim of obtaining a better living standard for our people. We might ourselves today call a country which was before previously just called, a th called the third world or a developing country, but today we can proudly call ourselves an emerging country. Para esta categorización, ha sido importante considerar las relaciones de dominio, de poder y de político entre estados. Entre esta situación económica que nos encontramos, que pareciera que fuera el motor central y el principal en el desarrollo de una sociedad o de un país, en ese ámbito nos encontramos dentro de un sistema político económico de libre mercado. Y así es que somos parte de ese mecanismo dinámico de economía mundial. In this categorization, it has been important to consider the power relations or the political domination that exists between states, the economic situation in which we, in which we find ourselves, the economy, which is the central or the main engine in the development of a society or a country. In this area, we are a free market economic economy with a political system and we are a part of that dynamic mechanism of global economy. Hoy mismo, el día de hoy, ayer, incluso, se, hay, se lleva a cabo en mi país la reunión anual del Grupo del Banco Mundial y del Fondo Monetario Internacional, que reúne ministros de finanzas, gobernadores de bancos centrales en miembros de, eh, y, país, y de países miembros de ambas instituciones. Estas personas se encuentran discutiendo el estado de la economía mundial y buscan la manera de cooperar en la solución de problemas de los países que lo integran. Today itself in my country, uh, the annual meeting of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund is going on, which brings together the finance ministers and central bank governors from 188 member countries of both the institutions. These people are right now discussing the state of the world economy and are looking for ways to cooperate, uh, in, to cooperate in solving problems of the countries that are involved. Sabemos que hay incertidumbre económica en el mundo y la agenda considerará temas sobre la economía global, el panorama total, los efectos de las economías más grandes en distintas regiones, los precios de las materias primas y su impacto en los diferentes países. Verán de cómo el sector financiero y el financiamiento para el desarrollo, y además de otros temas como el cambio climático, el fortalecimiento de instituciones de gobierno, de América Latina con la próxima, en la próxima década, así como temas indudablemente también el precio de las materias primas. We know that there is an economic uncertainty in the world and the considered uh, and the agenda uh, and the items in the agenda of the global economy, the big picture, the effects of the largest economies in the regions, the prices of raw materials and their impact on different countries. You see how it is the financial sector and the and the development sector and uh, there are the other problems such as climate change, strengthening government institutions, and the entire region of Latin America in the next decade. La economía de mi país se sustenta básicamente en la minería, riqueza principal con la cual el Perú subsiste, y su mejor manejo político y económico está destinado a incrementar nuestro Producto Bruto Interno. Pero a su vez, la minería es el principal tema de conflicto que hay actualmente, por lo que estos asuntos ambientales, por una parte, no aceptan la inversión, 
para la explotación o extracción de las materias primas, porque al parecer, de acuerdo a las condiciones de los contratos mineros, estos estarían atentando contra los medios naturales de la subsistencia entre la tierra y el agua que los rodea. The economy of my country is basically supported by mining, which is the primary wealth that has remained with Peru. And we require better political and economic management to increase our gross domestic product. But mining is the main, also the main theme of conflict in my country. Regarding environmental issues, on the one hand, there is not enough invest, proper investment for the extraction of raw materials and there is a lot of exploitation because apparently according to the conditions of mining contracts, these infringe natural livelihoods which affects the land and water that the people use. Y si de algo experiencia podemos invocar como ejemplo para graficar este conflicto que les he señalado, es que el, la Amazonía peruana, que es la selva, durante muchos años hubo extracción petrolera con extranjeros. El resultado es que esas zonas nunca llegaron a obtener una economía. Siguen siendo subdesarrollados y sigue habiendo pobreza, siguen siendo igual, estando igual. Entonces, lo que se opone en esa decisión del gobierno sobre el uso de los recursos es porque no nos asegura que esa decisión sea la más correcta. One of the examples that illustrates this is the conflict that occurred in uh, the Amazon forest uh, in Peru that there was an, there was oil extraction by foreign companies for many years and the result is that these zones have been polluted but they have not reached a, uh, a proper level of development. And the people who opposed the government's decision, which wanted to make the best use of resources, they said that the government does not ensure, uh, uh, that does not, is not ensuring, the, the government now wants to ensure that there is no repeat of this example of the Amazon forest. Ciertamente, la democracia es el instrumento político más ambicioso que los seres humanos han creado y que ha dado resultados óptimos en ciertas latitudes, pero aún, aún con dificultades y dentro de la sin llegar a la perfección, significa que los seres humanos que pueblan la tierra no se les puede considerar dentro de la planificación, calificación de pobreza o pobreza extrema ni miseria. Para ello es que resulta necesario considerar a un gobierno global que incida y pretenda extender para todos los habitantes de la democracia como forma de gobierno que aleje a las personas que sufren de la pobreza y como, como objetivo y como meta. Certainly, if democracy is the most ambitious political tool that human beings have created and has given good results in certain latitudes, for example, in Europe, it is uh, while struggling without reaching perfection means that humans populate the earth and they cannot be uh, they cannot just be considered within the ratings of poverty and extreme poverty it is necessary to consider a global movement that affects to or purports to extend to all inhabitants democracy as a form of government that people should do away from suffering and extreme poverty and misery it should be the only objective and goal of democracy por ello es que se requiere del gobierno de las leyes internacionales como instrumento de la democracia global vía la de democratización de las Naciones Unidas, consolidando un nuevo orden mundial democrático ante la necesidad de una mejor comprensión para aquellos desposeídos que de dejan de utilizar sus propias riquezas a expensas del perjuicio que el Estado ha rebasado. And for that it is imperative that the government Uh, that, the gov that there should be a government for international law as an instrument of global democracy through the democratization of the United Nations consolidating a new democratic world order for a better understanding of uh, those who cannot use their own wealth at the expense of damage control and which the national state does not take care of. Convengo en que la democracia global debe fundamentarse en la generación de nuevas instituciones sin perder la esencia de la democracia con sus valores y principios para evitar la concentración del poder, porque esta debe ser distante de las formas totalitarias de gestionar la vida pública. Señor, ¿dónde está? El, la última. La misma, penúltima. Penúltimo párrafo. Ok. ¿Podría repetir? 
Convengo en que la democracia global deba fundarse en la generaciones, generación de nuevas instituciones, okay. sin perder la esencia de la democracia en valores y principios para evitar la concentración del poder. I uh, agree that global democracy must be based on the creation of new institutions without losing the essence of democracy or its values and principles to avoid the concentration of power because uh, this is one way we can keep ourselves away from totalitarian authorities managing our lives. Sé que necesitamos de un nuevo orden mundial en líneas democráticas y creo como un paso indispensable empezar a pensar y hablar en ellas como en este escenario se ha escuchado dialogar y discutir las propuestas y es por ello que comprendo que quienes asumen esa tarea tienen mucho amor por la humanidad, amor por las leyes y ese es mi compromiso a partir de la fecha a difundir el amor por las leyes que es la esencia de mi trabajo diario. Les expreso por ello mi admiración por esta lucha en la que me comprometo a coadyuvar. Gracias. I know we need a new world order on democratic lines and I think this is an indispensable step to start thinking and talking about it, what the scenario will be, to dialogue and discuss the proposals. The topic that is assigned to me is new to me and that is why I understand that those who assume the task have a lot of love for humankind, love for the law and that is going to be my commitment from today onwards to spread the word for the love of law which is the essence of my daily work. I express my admiration for this democratic fight, which I promise to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, we really do understand that nature nowadays rather ignores political and social barriers altogether. There is a new global dimension of the crisis which is there and uh, it cancels the effects of any action which is initiated unilaterally by state governments or sectoral institutions, however powerful they may be. Madam Speaker very rightly said that in this condition we require a new world order which is very democratic in its nature. At present uh, we have the United Nations which is not democratic and this is what we have been talking of. Uh, in the United Nations, the people are not being represented. It is the governments which are being represented. And we know that a country with a one million population or maybe less has one vote. Similarly, another country with more than a million or more than a hundred million population too has one vote. So this is one thing which uh, I think uh, sort of uh, also is, a, is the thought that ma'am wanted to put forth. She wanted to say that we need to work on a different kind of order for the gov for the, or a different kind of government order so that we can change or we can cater to the requirement of the world today. Right, ma'am? Thank you so much for doing so. And uh, with the request of the chair, may, with the permission of the chair rather, may we request the children to put up their questions. Could we do that, sir? Yeah, yeah. Right. it's time for interaction. Time May for we request the yes. children to put forth their questions. We have these legal luminaries here with us, and it's a unique opportunity. Please come up with any questions that you have in mind pertaining to the topic that we discussed today. Can we have the hand mic for the children? Yes, if there are any questions, I'm sure we'll be there. we are here to answer them. Is there anybody with a question? You've been listening to all these speeches. Is there any question that arose in your mind? Please come. And when you come here, you're going to introduce yourself and say your question very clearly. And you're also going to tell us who do you want for the Hello, sir. My name is Harshwadhan Sparty from Anandagar Campus, City Montessori School. My question is to the Honorable Mr. Justice of Argentina. Sir. sir, as you mentioned, the problems of Argentina in your speech to all of us. So, what changes can be brought about as your participation in this Chief Justice Conference? In this Chief Justice Conference, uh, uh, to in bringing peace in this world and... Uh, 
maintaining the uh, uh, peace in Argentina. What changes can be brought about as a result of your participation in this chain, uh, in this uh, Chief Justice Conference in Argentina? What changes can be brought about as a result? Because he is here. Okay. Because he is here. So what changes can he make? Okay. How can he contribute? Okay. Okay. As his participation. Because he has participated here. Debido a su participación en esta conferencia, ¿cuáles son los cambios que usted piensa que usted puede tomar en la, en la Argentina o en el mundo para cambiar la situación y hacerla más beneficiosa, más de paz. Eh, lo que justamente una de las cosas que yo estaba, que yo dije antes eh, cuando no quise leer es que la visión eh, que uno tiene cuando expone va modificándose eh, en la interacción cuando yo escribí esto lo que tenía en cuenta es eh, la realidad de mi país ¿sí? eh, y en mi país es mucho eh, digo, es necesario es importante que cada uno de los jóvenes como ustedes eh, tome conciencia del resto de la sociedad eh, no la mentalidad eh, occidental diría no es para nada igual a la de ustedes y no hay conciencia de que todos tenemos que participar eh, para que exista un nuevo orden más justo más democrático en el que no haya personas con necesidades y personas con riqueza extrema. Eh. Uh, Sir just said that his um, idea, like he said, it keeps changing. If you attend such events, um, you get more ideas through interaction, through participation in conferences. So ideas keep modifying themselves, and like he said, uh, before coming to Argentina when he was right, before coming to India when he was writing this paper, he believes that it is very important for you all to participate uh, as students, as uh, as citizens in this uh, fight for democracy to establish a better world for everybody to fight for your own rights as well. Uh. Una, un, agrego una cosa más en mi país eh, por ejemplo no se, como no se registra un, un compromiso de cada individuo en general ¿no? de cada individuo con el resto de la sociedad eh, sucede que hay muchas personas que por carencias económicas no comen, no estudian eh, viven eh, de muy mala manera hasta que algún día terminan robando en conflicto con el derecho penal y ese día es cuando el resto de la sociedad, que eh, estoy hablando siempre en general, eh, eh, que el resto de la sociedad lo registra y lo que piden es o que lo metan preso o que lo maten. Y cuando esa forma de ver las cosas cambie, eh, puede ser que el mundo mejore. Y yo creo que desde mi lugar lo que puedo hacer es contribuir a que cambie la forma de pensar, que el de al lado no me sea, no me sea indiferente. He wants to add that in Argentina there are many social crimes um, and uh, because of poverty and uh, little education among people and it's that usually the people who are educated, who come from a different class, they don't take these things seriously. They would much rather file a complaint in the police regarding these crimes, but they would not take steps to fight the actual cause of these things. So he thinks it is very important that people like him and like every one of us should first understand the real cause, the nature of crimes or poverty and all and deal with them um, in a peaceful way. Say thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was very nice. Uh, we heard that we need to be the change that we want to see. So that's what we learned from him. Uh, can we have the next question? We just have approximately seven to eight minutes. So whoever has a question, quickly come up. Yes. Uh, 
My name is Devansh Pachpe and I am from CMS Anandagar campus. My question is to uh, judge from Cameroon that uh, by what standards can international institu uh, institutions claim to be legitimate? Can and should they be democratic? Can you take that again? Yeah, say it again. By what standards, by what standards can international institutions claim to be legitimate? Can and should they be democratic? Okay, thank you. You know, democracy, like we know it, one man, one vote, is good when it comes to nation, to countries. But when it comes to international institutions, there the representation is a matter of representation. In the United Nations, for example, India has representatives. Cameroon has. Okay, granted that in the United Nations General Assembly, the voting rights are equal. So, so far, we may say that democracy there is perfect. But now, what's the, what's the issue today? Look at the Security Council. A lot of people think that the Security Council is outdated. It was created at the end of the Second World War. The forefathers of the United Nations had one idea. How do we prevent further world wars. What did they do? They took those people that thought could take decisions and act upon them. Those they called powers. The United States, the Soviet Union at the time, today Russia, the United Kingdom, France, and China. It used to be Taiwan. China. In fact, those were the power brokers of the time. But today, things have changed. Can this group of people take decisions for all of us? Look at the population of India. Look at the economic strength of India. I do not think France or the United States is in any way stronger militarily, economically, than India, than, West, than Germany, than Japan. They're not. But all the same, we still have these powers to do the power brokerage for us all. So that if we talk about democracy at such a level, I think people have a right to contest. And that's why people are asking, let the Security Council be more democratic. What do we mean? Or what do, th what do those people mean? Better representation. Representation, it could be by regions. It could be based on some factor, maybe economic population, but let's have something that is more representative of the people of the world. That is the sort of democracy we're thinking about in the international institutions. Is that okay? Thank you, sir. That is really nice. Uh, so we seem to be, all of us, we seem to be on the same page. We're all talking of better representation. Right, sir? We're all talking of better representation in the international organizations, in the international institutions. I think we just have time for one more question. Uh, can we call it the last question of the day, sir? With the permission of the chair, sir? Our uh, chairperson, can we just have this last question? One more. Come forward. Yes, please come forward.
So my name is Yadullah Abdi. I'm from the CMS Chalk campus. Um, my question, I'm afraid, though in relevance to the topic, is a bit different. We're talking about a global governance structure here. And it's not uh, to any specific speaker, it's to all of you in general, that if we want a global governance structure, how do we hope to achieve it? I mean to say that, uh, let's for say we have a central government controlling the world, and then we have their representatives in, say, different regions. Now, sir, human psychology is dominance. They want uh, to be people in their own groups. Even in school, we have student groups and stuff like that. So um, if, for example, uh, say we have a democratic global government, so we have to put the power in the hands of people. And if we do that, um, every uh, single group or every single culture, civilization, whatever you want to say, it will try and make sure that uh, they only have their own leaders on top. And for every uh, free citizen, for every loner, nothing is true but everything is permitted. It's not like that. We'll always have uh, Dante who will act like a devil and end up like an angel. And we'll have a Virgil who will act like uh, an angel and end up like a devil. But they will be the sense of Sparta. They'll have a single source. So how do we hope to rectify that source so that uh, it produces more of good people, more of Dantes who act in a more peaceful manner, who are devils gone good, who work for the world as a whole and do not think about straight communities. Okay, well, thank you. You see, this is a personal opinion, but I've seen it work in my country. You see, in every true democracy, because a democracy, what is it? It's the government of the people for the people, by the people. Which means this. It's not so much the majority that counts. There must be what you call split breaks to take care of minority interest. Because certainly if we don't do that, the majority or the more powerful will dominate the situation, sit on the minority, crush the weak. They must, they must look for a situation where the majority rules, yes, but the majority rules with the consent of the minor. The majority rules with the consent of the minority. Because it, it serves no useful purpose having a power, a government that crushes a minority group. At the international scene, we think of maybe give every region a voice in the Security Council. We we'll do it that way. Every region, it could be that way. Then certain regions that may not be able to catch up, we say someone may, should be elected from the General Assembly to represent that particular region. Because presently, what, does, what happens in the Security Council? You've got permanent members. Their idea of taking care of the minority is having one elected every two years. But you see, the guy who is elected hasn't got the veto powers. The permanent members can veto any decision. But the one elected, watch out, elected hasn't got the veto powers. What is his reason date of being a member then? That's not the sort of democracy we want. If you are either a member or you are not, once you are a member, have the same powers as every member of that council. I think that's the sort of democracy I think the majority of people want at that level. Am I, am I clear? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, answered. well, I think uh, he said I'm very well answered. So he was very thankful to you for that explanation. And we all understand that we have to sacrifice our small interest in, uh, in for bigger interests. And that is the reason why we are all here. For the past 15 years, 
we have been very gradually trying to change mindsets we are very gradually trying to bring people of the world together through conferences like this because we all understand this is a mammoth task like uh, what's your name i forgot your name child just say your name again zerulla yadulla like he mentioned he very he very he wanted us to understand that it's a difficult task and how exactly are we going to be able to accomplish it but yes it is a difficult task that's why we have taken it up and that's why we have legal luminaries coming from all parts of the world getting together discuss this and when they go back they talk about it in their own countries and that is the reason why we are having all these chief justices conferences for the past 16 years and uh, now i'd like to thank on behalf of all the students who are present here i would like to thank all the eminent speakers who were here thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you students for putting up all those questions and being a very good audience also thank you so much and can we all clap for each other once again